Hey team, and welcome to another video in the Astrological Magical Elections video series. Today we're going to talk about those magical election opportunities that are going to be available to us between the Aquarius New Moon on February 11th until the Virgo Full Moon on February 26th. So those of us who, or those of you who watched uh, or were here with me last time will know that we did not have any magical elections to really talk about last time, which wasn't fun, um, but I got to spend a little bit of time talking about a question that I get asked a lot about um, in regards to house systems, which was a little bit of fun. Um, so that's nice, but now we're actually going to have some magical electional opportunities that are that we're going to be able to utilize. Partly, you know, it's a waxing moon, the square between Mars and Saturn have separated, and so you'll notice that all of the electional opportunities that I show today um, are going to have either an Aries Ascendant, or a Cancer Ascendant, or an Aquarius Ascendant. So we're going to lean really heavily into those, uh, into those Ascendants today. The Aquarius New Moon also marks the beginning of the Lunar New Year uh, in the Chinese calendar system and the emergence of a new uh, animal in the Chinese Zodiac. 2021 uh, will be the year of the Metal Ox, so happy Spring Festival and Lunar New Year to everybody who celebrates, uh, and good luck all of my Ox viewers who are having to deal with the Grand Duke in their sign. So some places in the world are actually going to be kind of busy this lunation, just having so many different magical opportunities available to them. Um, other places are going to be a little less busy. So kind of our setup for this lunation is that Aqu uh, Australia is uh, it has a lot going on. The land down under is going to be pretty busy, especially on February 22nd, so that'll be fun to talk about. Uh, North America, a little bit less busy. And then Western Europe is just kind of sleeping um, through this time period. So they, sorry, guys, you guys kind of uh, miss out on a bunch of opportunities. Um, which is, you know, unfortunate, but there have been times when you guys have had the most, so try not to be too upset about it. Um, so we're gonna actually going to go ahead and start with Australia since they have the most to cover, um, and we'll talk about different opportunities that they are going to experience during this two-week period. So like I said, Australia has a bunch of different uh, opportunities to, to aim for, to, to be able to take advantage of. During this time period, uh, they have five magical election opportunities, which is a good number, but these five election opportunities are spread between two different days, so it's uh, it's kind of a, a concentration here. Our first magical op uh, election opportunity that we're going to talk about is going to be for February 17th at around 9.30 in the morning, and this is going to be an opportunity for a, th a third Lunar Mansion Talisman. So this is actually a bit of a surprise. I didn't anticipate us having uh, being able to have third Lunar Mansion Talisman opportunities for a while, just because of Saturn being positioned in um, early Aquarius, call it casting some uh, a square aspect to the end-ish uh, of this mansion, so that the just kind of like increasing the likelihood that the moon here in this mansion was going to be applying the square to Saturn, which is not appropriate for what this mansion can do. So I had just kind of like assumed that we wouldn't really have Third Lunar Mansion Talismans uh, available to us for a while until Saturn moved further into Aquarius and kind of moved on past this this square. But you know, luckily we have an opportunity for today, um, and Saturn is actually starting to do that to move further into Aquarius uh, and past sort of like the more difficult, uh, the more difficult aspect. So taking a look at our example here. Uh, our election here, I'm sorry, not our example. We have the moon placed here in the third lunar mansion in the first house. She's not as angular uh, as I would really like her to be. You know, my I usually like her like right here, or right here, right on top of it. Um, but that's not what I've got to work with today, and that's fine, we're, we can we can work with it, we can make it work. Um, and what we're really aiming here for here is the moon sextile to the sun in Aquarius. Uh, you'll notice that their positions are very, very close to one another. Uh, 28 degrees uh, Aries in six minutes, 28 degrees Aquarius in 30 minutes. So only about 24 minutes of arc separate the completion of the sextile, which is why you don't see the moon more angular on the ascendants. By the time she makes it uh, to that position, she's already starting to separate from the sun, uh, and we don't want that. We want the sextile to the sun. You know, if you've watched some of these videos in the past, you know that I always really prefer uh, the moon aspecting the sun as much as I can possibly get it. Uh, when I see, you know, I always try to find those mansions where the moon is making those positive aspects with the sun, either the sextile or the trine, and see if I can make an election opportunity for it. And usually you can, but sometimes you can't. Um, and so here we were able to do that. We we're able to make that possible. The ruler of the first house, since the first house is in Aries, is going to be Mars placed here in Taurus. Uh, you know, Mars is debilitated in Taurus kind of generally uh, by, by sign dignity, which is not a huge deal. Um, we're really a little bit more concerned with uh, accidental debilities uh, in most cases. And here, Mars is fairly clear of it. The only kind of negative aspect of it is that Mars doesn't view the Ascendant, which is something that we would typically want. But Mars isn't, you know, afflicted by the Sun, by, you know, being combusted or anything like that. And he's not square Saturn. 
So we don't have some of these more obvious uh, debilities uh, or afflictions happening to Mars. We're just sort of dealing with this aversion to the Ascendant, which is not ideal, but in my opinion, not a deal breaker, especially with a lunar mansion like the third. The third lunar mansion is one of my favorites. It is for the acquisition of all good things, sort of like a, a genie in a bottle kind of a thing. Um, so for individuals who have sort of like more general uh, or even specific, I guess, uh, goals or, you know, needs, the third litter mansion is really great for just about anything. So I definitely recommend, um, I definitely recommend this, uh, electional opportunity for anybody who may be in need of, you know, anything that is conventionally good. So the real big, uh, we'll say, busy day is actually February 22nd, which holds four different electional opportunities, uh, for us to utilize. So that's fun. Um, and it starts off uh, at around 10 a.m., about 9.55 is what this chart is set for. And we're going to have our first is going to be an opportunity for a seventh lunar mansion talisman. Um, so the seventh lunar mansion, I call it like the spear counterpart of the third lunar mansion. They're very, very similar in that they're both used for like wish granting almost, and, like the acquisition of all good things. So if you are unable to get the third lunar mansion talisman, um, then the seventh lunar mansion talisman is a really great alternative. They cover basically, you know, the same thing. Um... But here, looking at our electional opportunity, um, this one is, of course, a little bit different from how I normally like to do them. Typically, I like them to be very angular, but I often will make exceptions for the moon in the third house, especially because that is the house uh, traditionally of her joy. So the moon does very well here, here, even though it is classically a cadent house. So kind of one of those uh, exemptions from some of the rules that are more standard in uh, magical electional construction, something to take advantage of. Uh, and to take consideration of if you're making your own elections, uh, you know, maybe the moon or maybe there's something wrong with where the moon is uh, or there's something wrong with the election while the moon is in the ascendant or the 10th house, look to the 11th or 3rd uh, and see if you can't get something good there. So we've got the moon placed here in the 3rd house of her joy and at this time she is applying this trine to the sun. Uh, so kind of keeping within my normal, my normal limits here, aspects with the sun, always great. But just like our other uh, election for the third lunar mansion, we still got that Aries rising. We still got Mars as ruler of the first house um, here. You know, also in Taurus, uh, it's continuing to be in Taurus, um, still not afflicted by the Sun or Saturn or anything like that. Just sort of dealing with that uh, essential debility of being in Taurus and also the aversion to the Ascendant. We still have that, uh, but you know, not a deal breaker in my opinion uh, in the third lunar mansion election chart, and still not a deal breaker in my opinion in this seventh lunar mansion uh, election chart. Definitely would prefer the Mars to be in a, in a you know kind of a, a better house or you know a more angular house or being able to at least see the Ascendant. But mm. what are you gonna do? So our next electional opportunity is actually two different opportunities. Um, both are worth talking about. The first is that this is now an eighth lunar mansion talisman chart. Um, the moon has crossed over into the eighth lunar mansion at this time, which begins at zero degrees cancer. The moon is at zero degrees cancer and 50 minutes. So she's almost been in this mansion for an entire degree. Um, but now she is firmly within the eighth lunar mansion and is still applying that shrine to the sun. Um, while also being ruler of the first house, we know she's not afflicted and now she's strong in the sign of cancer. Um, so this is a really good chart. The Eighth Lunar Mansion is a mansion that is primarily for like victory and conquest. Um, typically utilized more within like litigation or things like that, like something where you're in kind of like a, a direct need to overcome or be victorious over something. That's usually more what the Eighth Lunar Mansion is about. So even though it does have these more obvious like direct confrontation, victory over an opponent, sort of powers or personality to it. I suppose it could also be utilized in sort of like more professional settings where you're kind of more passively in competition with people who are, with people or companies who are providing similar services or goods as you are as a way to help you kind of stand out uh, and kind of like be the, 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 the standard bearer, I guess, uh, in you know whatever field or whatever it is that you do, the Eighth Lunar Mansion can still help you do. So it's not something that is specifically you know only useful for people who are like in a legal battle or some sort of thing like that. Uh, it can be used a little bit more passively to kind of help you stand out above people who are like people or or companies who are doing kind of similar things as you. Um, so that's another thing to kind of keep in mind with this mansion. Not necessarily direct confrontation, but you know kind of like the passive help you stand up above. Uh, the crowd essentially. At the same time, this is actually an example of a of a moon planetary talisman. Um, so I don't really necessarily recommend using 
the same election for both purposes, like making a talisman both for the Eighth Lunar Mansion and for the Moon, a planetary talisman at the same time, um, is a little bit more difficult to do. So I usually recommend doing a one or the other kind of thing and just leaving them, you know, just picking, pick your, you know, pick your starter Pokemon, basically. Uh, you can only take one. Um, and, but in this one, I would highly recommend just doing the lunar, like doing the, the moon planetary talisman, uh, because you wouldn't think it, you really wouldn't. Uh, but moon planetary talismans are actually very, very difficult to find. Um, since, and it kind of depends a little bit on what flavor of moon talismans you want. Uh, because obviously you can have, with Moon Talismans uh, and with Lunar Mansion Talismans, you know, um, the Moon phase is super important. So typically with Moon Talismans, you want the Moon to be waxing because you typically want to like gain, uh, to gain lunar things or lunar qualities. That's usually the idea, right? To empower uh, or to gain. But you could also have a waning one uh, if you wanted. They're just not as ideal, I think, or not as conventionally useful, maybe the better way to phrase it. Um, so... It's definitely, lunar moon planetary talismans are definitely much more difficult to find, much more rare, so I definitely recommend using that uh, if you want want Like, if you if you want to use uh, this opportunity for something, the moon planetary talismans is one that you definitely want to utilize more. It's more difficult to find. The conditions are more difficult. And this is actually a really, really nice uh, moon election, uh, which was, you know, a surprise. I didn't really think we'd have one for, for a bit, but you, this is a good one. We have the moon. She's waxing, which is really good. She's strong in her sign of cancer, which is really great. Um, she's a, um, she's not aspecting Saturn, not aspecting Saturn, or Mars at this time. Um, she's applying this trine to the Sun. Uh, the Moon's uh, waxing trine, I think, is always a really strong, probably one of her strongest uh, phases. The only thing that keeps it from being perfect is that the Moon is actually slow at this time. She's moving below her average speed. Um, but she is starting to move more quickly. Like, she's not at her slowest. She's starting to move faster, um, but she's still slow. So that's sort of the unfortunate part of it that we have to kind of accept <laughs> or, you know, deal with. But other than that, everything is really, really great. Um, and I was really shocked to see that we have a, uh, a moon uh, a talisman opportunity at all. So good job for... Australia, who is the only uh, place that will get it. So good job for you guys. <laughs> all right, so that's actually all for our Australian charts. I know that I said that there were five opportunities, but I guess there are only four, and I wrote down the same one twice because that's Mercury retrograde. Um, so uh, we're going to move on into our Western European charts. And here we only have two, and they're not the same. I did not write the same one down twice. They're actually two distinct ones. Um, they're going to be different too, so that's kind of fun. But our first example is going to be for um, February 14th at around 7.18, 7.20-ish a.m. And here we're going to have an opportunity for a Saturn planetary talisman, which is exactly the planetary talisman, the planetary energy that you want to carry with you for Valentine's Day. Like, why not? That's, that's, that's a thing. That's a fun thing to do. Um, so here we're going to have this opportunity for the Saturn planetary talisman. It's going to be the, uh, the, the early morning hours before the sunrise on a Sunday, so still the planetary day of Saturn. And that's really kind of the timing that we're leaning into a little bit more here. We have Saturn conjoined the ascendant here, kind of along with everybody really. Um, Saturn conjoined the ascendant here in six degrees of Aquarius, while the moon in late Pisces, as she crosses over into Aries, will do, will, will, will cast a sextile over to Saturn uh, in this position. The moon is unafflicted by Mars. Uh, Saturn is unafflicted by Mars. The ascendant is unafflicted by Mars. Looking all pretty good. Um, you can even go ahead and say that Saturn is conjoined Jupiter in Aquarius. That's fine too. Another is just sort of like an empowering, uplifting effect. Absolutely great. Um, so this is a really great example uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, whoop. So a really great, unexpected, in my opinion, uh, election for a Saturn talisman for, you know, remediating any sort of Saturn issues you might have or deepening a connection to Saturn signified things or processes. Absolutely great to pick up on there. Our second opportunity for our Western European viewers is going to be February 16th at around 9.30 a.m. And here we're going to have that opportunity for now a second Lunar Mansion Talisman. 
And the second lunar mansion is kind of an interesting one. It is primarily has to do with the removal of anger and the removal of anger to make room for forgiveness and acceptance, which you know are super important emotional processes. This is a talisman that is sort of more traditionally utilized for like, oh, I've made the king angry. I should probably fix that. Uh, and making a talisman to you know, like make the king kind of forget about you and not send people out to arrest you. That's kind of the idea. So, you know, with that in mind, it could potentially be utilized to like evade the authorities. So don't tell them I told you that. Um, but I tend to utilize it or suggest it more in situations where there is where forgiveness is wanted, uh, particularly like somebody who is struggling to forgive another person or anything like that. And there are, of course, a lot of reasons why that might necessarily be a good idea. Um, but typically, I, I am of the opinion that forgiveness is something that you do not for the other person specifically, but also for yourself to kind of free yourself of, uh, to kind of take those first steps and kind of working past or healing any sort of trauma. Um, so for individuals who have this, just like this, this anger that they're not able to shake towards another person or towards a situation or something like that. Uh, the second little ranch can actually be very helpful in starting to that process of moving forward uh, to kind of, you know, unburden oneself in a way. This is, of course, not the only sort of like talismanic spirit that can perform this operation. Um, the, you know, there are others that may be a little bit more useful or a bit more uh, indicated for. Uh, like traumatic uh, emotional issues like Spica I think is probably generally better uh, than the second litter mansion but you know so in, in some cases I think it may be better to wait for Spica elections but at the same time uh, the second litter mansion can also do it and I think that that is you know another opportunity or another option worth exploring uh, because I can't tell you right now when we're going to have an opportunity for a Spica talisman that's just not something that I know about right now but taking a look at our election uh, that we've got going here, we have the moon conjoined the ascendant uh, in mid the middle to late Aries. Uh, and the moon here is applying that sextile to the sun. Uh, you know, I always like the sextiles and aspects to the sun. Um, and sort of my more classic, we'll say Ryan type of election where the moon is much more in an angular house, more conjoined, you know, one of the, one of the angles, one of the prominent angles and applying to a great planet. Um, we're still kind of dealing with some of those issues with Mars, like we talked about in the Australian versions of some of these charts. Uh, not that the not that Australia had a second lunar mansion talisman election; theirs was a third because the Moon was more advanced uh, in Aries. Uh, but just sort of that, you know, you have Aries rising, so that points to Mars as really the first house. Mars is in Taurus, not doing so, you know, well essentially as far as like the the, the essential dignity that Mars carries. Um, but Mars is inflicted by Saturn, Mars is not combust the sun, uh, Mars is not retrograde. It's none of those sort of like immediate things that make me, you know, just toss out or not even consider a planet as a ruler of the first house. Um, so it's definitely, uh, definitely workable. So Western Europe, short and sweet. Now we're going to move on to our North American um, electional charts, of which there are four that we can talk about. Our first electional opportunity is actually going to be for February 14th at 5.54 a.m. And this is going to be sort of the North American chart, the North American version of that Saturn uh, talisman opportunity that we talked about in the European uh, section of the video. Uh, and it's set up actually very, very similarly. We're going to have the early Aquarius rising. We're going to have Saturn conjoin the ascendant here in early Aquarius. We're going to have the moon apply uh, the sextile to Saturn as she crosses over into Aries. Um, and this is going to occur during Saturn's day. So kind of our four big things we want to check off. Um, the planet that, the target planet, Saturn in this case, being in a sign of essential dignity of some kind, um, being very angular, conjoined the ascendant or the midheaven, the moon immediately applying to this planet, and this all happening during Saturn's day or hour. Done. Uh, we also need to make sure that no bad things are happening to Saturn. Saturn's not retrograde. Saturn's not square Mars. Saturn is not combust the sun, anything like that. So all in all, it just kind of checks out as a pretty standard example of a planetary talisman uh, electional chart. Saturn talismans are really great uh, things to have, especially for individuals who kind of struggle a lot with uh, kind of Saturn archetypical things or Saturn uh, challenges. So very useful for individuals who are born at night uh, who tend to suffer more from uh, the wrath of Saturn, we'll say, than they do from the wrath of Mars, since Saturn is out of sect in the night charts. Um, or it can also be used to kind of deepen one's understanding of Saturn type things uh, or kind of like take on or kind of command, uh, which isn't a super word that I like to use in this context, uh, particular powers of Saturn. 
uh, like insofar as being able to speak or connect with, communicate with the spirits of the deceased or spirits at all, uh, or any other sort of Saturn type venture, such as like assistance with agriculture or mining, kind of like fruits of the earth, essentially, or even for assistance with Saturn type illnesses or debilities, you know, uh, chronic pain, arthritis, or just to kind of generally help one uh, maneuver the aging process, Saturn talismans are also very good for. So I definitely recommend picking up a Saturn talisman if you're at all interested or think that you may be interested because really our opportunities, our chances for Saturn talismans are going to start to come to a close. Uh, you know, once Saturn leaves Aquarius, we're done with Saturn talismans really uh, until Saturn comes to Libra in 21 years. Uh, so, you know, we'll have some kind of minor things we can work with insofar as like Saturn and, you know, Gemini and one of its surplicities. But other than that, we're not going to have a whole lot to really do. So make sure that if you're at all interested or at all think you might be interested in working with a Saturn talisman to get it as soon as you can, uh, because time is running out. Which is actually kind of a Saturnian thing. Now you think about it, a race against the clock. The sands, like sands in the hourglass. So are our days of Saturn and Aquarius. So our next uh, election opportunity for the North American continent is actually going to be for February 15th at around 3.15ish in the afternoon. And this is going to be an opportunity for that second lunar mansion talisman that we talked about in the Western European ver or section of the video. Here we're going to have the moon conjoin the ascendant in that second lunar mansion while she's also the ruler of the first house. Um, so we don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, while she's applying the sextile. No, 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 no. While she's applying the sextile to Venus, not Jupiter. Uh, in at this moment, the, or the moon is not afflicted by Saturn. She's not afflicted by Mars. The ascendant is not afflicted by Saturn or Mars. But what we're watching, what we're trying to pay attention to, is that the opposition of Saturn is starting to get closer to the ascendant. So we kind of want to make sure that we stay within like the mid ranges of Cancer uh, while we can. Don't go too far deep into Cancer, and definitely don't go into Leo, or we're going to have to deal with this opposition from Saturn much more. Uh, immediately and we don't want to deal with that we don't want to deal with it at all uh, so the second lunar mansion like I talked about in the West European version or the West European section uh, the second lunar mansion is a mansion that is primarily utilized for the removal of anger uh, historically it was utilized to remove anger or from uh, from like a, a, a from an authority figure basically you know if the king's angry with you this talisman can help soothe that over to where you're no longer kind of like you no longer have basically a warrant out for your for your arrest um, I, t I like to encourage people to utilize it who are struggling to overcome some sort of anger issue, maybe you're kind of struggling with, ang with explosive anger or angry episodes generally, very helpful for, or for individuals who are struggling to, uh, to forgive uh, either themselves or another individual uh, and are kind of really struggling or, or holding on to you know, that anger or that grief that's keeping them from moving forward in some you know, real way. Because like I've already expressed, I'm firmly of the opinion that forgiveness is not necessarily something that you give to somebody else, but it's something that you give to yourself, either in sort of like literally forgiving yourself for like a regret or, you know, something that you've done in the past. Uh, that's obviously really important, but even being able to forgive something that another person has done to you to forgive that person is something that is useful also for yourself. It's not something that you're holding on to. It's not, you know, it's some sort of like anger uh, that you that you continue to carry carry with yourself as you move throughout your life. Uh, so I really recommend the Second Lunar Mansion for people who are kind of struggling with some issue like that. It doesn't mean that you forget what happened or what somebody did to you. It just means that you no longer consciously carry it with you as you move forward in your life. Because I think that's sort of one of the worst things that you can do uh, is to let somebody have that kind of power over you. Uh, and this helps, you know, kind of free you from that in a way. There are... Uh, I think better uh, entities or better uh, better spirits for this for this kind of especially for individuals who are suffering from like um, post traumatic stress disorders or something like that. I like speak up much better for that. Um, but the second lunar mansion is what we have to work with right now. So if it's something that you think you might be interested in, definitely uh, utilize it if you can. Because I can't tell you when we're gonna have a speak a talisman. It's just not something I'm aware of yet. Our next electional opportunity is basically for one day later, February 16th at around uh, 3.15 in the afternoon. And this is for the third Lunar Mansion Talisman, you know, one of my favorites, uh, sort of the wish-granting talisman used for the acquisition of all good things. So I definitely recommend having a third Lunar Mansion Talisman in your pocket or in your corner at all times, at all times. You should never go without one. 
Um, and here we're this uh, this opportunity is very similar. You know, it's just really uh, the next day basically, so it looks very very similar. The only thing that's really changed is the moon's location. Um, she's no longer as angular as she was. She's a little bit deeper into the tenth house, we'll say. We're still maintaining sort of that early uh, early third early early final third of Cancer rising to keep this uh, opposition from Saturn from interfering with it. Uh, while also keeping the moon as the ruler of the first house, and the moon is still applying the sextile to the sun. So for those individuals who are further to the west of me uh, in the mountain and the Pacific time zones, you may want to double check and make sure that you can still utilize this talisman um, because the moon is only about a degree and a half away from the completion of the sun. So if you're kind of further, further that way, make sure that the moon is still applying to the sun. You may have to move it back more to get it. But even in the moon, even having the moon in the eleventh, more in the eleventh house, isn't isn't bad. It's not you know it's not a reason to throw the whole chart out. Um, but just make sure, uh, just just make sure that you kind of maintain the Cancer rising. You don't want to go into Gemini rising. Our final uh, opportunity for the North American continent and our final opportunity that we're going to cover in the video is going to be for February 18th at around 6 p.m. And this is going to be an opportunity for an Al Gol fixed star talisman. Uh, so this one might be a little uh, difficult to use, we'll say, uh, maybe a little impractical, because if you notice the ascendant here is at 29 degrees Leo. So we have, you know, the sun as the ruler of the ascendant, which is fine. Um, but if we <laughs> if we wait like four minutes, uh, then the ascendant will have gone into Virgo. And when we do that, we're going to have to deal with Mercury retrograde as the ruler of the first house. And I do not like retrograde planets as the ruler of the first house. Uh, so this uh, so this might be a bit more impractical to utilize, or you're going to have to kind of get started earlier and be able to make this thing. Um, but what we're really focused on is this uh, conjunction of the Moon and Mars on, or very close to, the degree of the fixed star Al Gol. Al Gol is a star that is of the nature of Saturn and Mars, so I don't dislike the Moon-Mars conjunction in a way that I would typically dislike it in, you know, other... Uh, fixed star talismans where Mars is not involved, but here it's totally fine. And I'm going to go ahead and actually delete this so I don't make it look like Mercury is ruled the first house. And we'll just underline this under. Um, so I actually don't hate it. My 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 caveat is that Al Gol is a fixed star that is primarily utilized for self protection. It's sort of a I always characterize it as like a, an aggressive, a more aggressive neutralizer. It kind of senses a threat before the threat uh, more obviously manifests and kind of takes it out where it's no longer an issue for you. So it has this a bit more like aggressive, uh, Christopher Warnock kind of describes it as like a, a bulldog or a guard dog type energy. It just like goes after and takes the thing down. And that can be really great for you, for anybody uh, with it on their side. Uh, but it also kind of has this like, uh, Al Gol has this like a, a reputation of being more difficult to, to be around, more difficult to handle. Sort of the most common thing that everybody knows is that, oh, Al Gol will mess with your electronics, and that can be bad. Like, it can be fine or it can be bad, one of those two things. Um, and so, uh, for, so typically for fixed star, I say all this to say, that typically in fixed star talismans, what I'm aiming for is to have the moon applied to a planet that is of the nature of that star. So, like, for Al Gol, she's of the nature of Saturn and Mars. I want to have the moon applied to Saturn or Mars, usually. Um... And that's just sort of like doubling down on or more perfectly mirroring the nature of the star uh, better for that election. Because, uh, but, I say all that, but for our goal talismans, I actually also don't hate it if the moon applies to a gentler planet just to kind of tone down some of those more ag aggressive or more sort of like borderline malefic aspects of Al Gol's personality and the way that the star works. So basically, all of that to basically say that this is a really great example of an Al Gol fixed star talisman for Al Gol, but it might not be a really great example of an Al Gol fixed star talisman for you. Uh, and it really just has to come down to like your comfort level of what you're willing to, of kind of what you're open to enduring. Uh, you know, the moon conjoined Mars in an Al Gol fixed star talisman is going to be a very different manifestation of that star's power uh, or of that star's personality than, like, if the moon were applying a conjunction with Jupiter or something like that. Um, so <laughs> that's what I mean. Um, this can be a really great opportunity for an Al Gol fixed star talisman if you are somebody who is really interested in or has had good, uh, if you're somebody who has had good experiences with Al Gol talismans in the past, then this might be a really great exam, might be a really great opportunity for you to utilize uh, for a more pure, we'll say, uh, expression of Al Gol's personality and powers. 
if you are somebody who has not had a lot of experience with Algol talismans in the past, or is a bit more uh, timid about it, or maybe has never worked with Algol in the past before, then you might want to consider that this is not actually a great example uh, of an opportunity for you. Uh, and you might want to try a different opportunity where the moon is aligned with a planet that is of a gentler nature to kind of tone down on some of those more you know, obviously aggressive types of algal powers. And that's totally up to you. Either way is fine. Um, whatever you want to do, perfectly acceptable, perfectly fine. Uh, either one is fine. I've had great successes with algal talismans that uh, that do utilize Saturn and Mars type energy, and I've had great exam uh, great uh, experiences with those algal talismans that utilize, you know, like that, I have a really great algal talisman where the moon is applying to the sun, for example. For example. Um, so it just really depends on what you want to do and what you're comfortable with, but either option will be fine. If you want to dive into this one, good luck, I support you. If you'd rather wait for the next one, that's totally fine too. So, all right, those were all the electional opportunities that I had to share with you guys. Kind of a lot going on right now, a lot of different options to utilize, which is awesome. Uh, it's always really great when that happens, especially if it falls so closely on the heels of Lunation where we had absolutely nothing to do. So, I hope everybody has a great two weeks and it has a great Lunation. Happy Chinese New Year to all who celebrate, and I will see you guys all again on the Virgo Full Moon.